Okay, before I go into the watch list for um, Thursday already? Yeah, wow, Thursday, January 12th. Real quick, I'm putting this little uh, screenshot up here um, about our webinar, which is a week from tomorrow, Thursday night, January 19th. Um, I know a lot of people really, really liked our Inflection Point webinar, and you can still see that on our webinar page. Um, which, you know, it's all archived. And it really went into like some details about what we do when we trade. But we're trying to kind of rotate back and forth between um, setups and, and stuff like the inflection points. And then, you know, uh, the next webinar is going to be a little bit more lighthearted, but equally as important. Um, it's going to be more about the psychology and the mistakes that people make mentally that can bring you down. Because really, the only thing that separates a professional day trader, in my opinion, from everyone else who doesn't make it, is is consistency most people know how to find a pretty chart right most people um you know know what a breakout looks like or maybe know how to buy a pullback i mean most people have some you know that you take a course and you, you're kind of armed with enough info to be dangerous <laughs> to be dangerous to yourself but it's very few people can master like timing your entries right that to me that's the biggest thing if someone said what, what my success is is most uh, attributed to is for me sitting in cash until i find uh, one of those inflection points on a chart that makes sense on a stock that's in play and getting long. So I'll be green right after I get long. I can scale out and then protect the rest, right? I have a very, very good winning percentage, but the, it's not because I'm a magic. It's not because I'm a genius. It is because I've learned to be patient and only take a trade when that happens. Um, you know, when I get one of those perfect setups. Um, and otherwise, I'm in cash. Most people just aren't comfortable doing that, right? They, they always want to be in something. I mean, there's 250 people every day in our chat room and I watch a big chunk of them trading all day long, even through lunch, taking this, taking that. Um, maybe this will work. Maybe that'll work. And and I, I probably trade less than 90% of the people in the room, right? Today, I think I traded two or three stocks. And that was it all day. Um, anyway, so you have to have a process and then you have to learn to just do that over and over and always, always, always play defense, always protect against the downside, all right? Um, that's really, really important. And so the psychology behind that is the reason why very few people succeed, right? We're all human and we uh, we are all vulnerable to succumb to uh, greed, fear, um, and that dreaded term, you know, a trading death spiral. Been in a few in my life and I hated them. So I've just resolved to never be in another one. Um, but most people um, end up, you know, succumbing to that stuff. So that's why we do webinars like we're going to do a week from today. Okay, um, we're going to talk about, um, you know, WTF. We know it's not a stock symbol, but it is something that we say to ourselves when we're trading, right? And uh, we're we're going to try to help you, Wayne and I, next Thursday. And I may be drinking. I always talk about free scotch at the webinars. Um, this is one that uh, it's not very technical. It's more about, um, you know, the emotions. And when I talk about passionate stuff, I may just I don't know. You may just break out the gin and tonic. That's my latest phase. Anyway, we'll see. Um, let's go into the watch list. Uh, actually, I meant to start with Spy here. But please join us if you can. Oh, and by the way, everyone who attends will get entered into a drawing and one one person was going to get a free month in our chat room um, after the webinar is over. So there's a reason to attend that and the free scotch. Um, okay, so the Spy here. Try to adjust the volume a little bit. Looks like it might have a little bit high. Uh, the SPY ended up kind of flushing during the day and then ended up closing back at its high. So it's sort of like a flag above another flag. Um, in short, the reason I checked the SPY is it lets me know how the overall market's doing. And as long as we didn't have a shock event one way or another, then I just go ahead and go right into my watch list. So I'm going to do that. HSGX, there's nothing interesting about this chart other than in after hours, they had news and it's trading at uh, looks like 205, I think right now and after hours. So after a 152 close, you know, it's set to open up somewhere here. Well, we'll see by the time we open tomorrow. Um, it's gonna be a nice potential gap and go play, right? And you can see back here had a big two day rally. So I always look when I'm looking at um, stocks as potential gappers or just a potential uh, trade for me the next day or the same day or whatever, I always wanna go back and look at the last few months and see if the thing can ever kind of break free. And this one did right here and did right here. Hasn't done much since, but with the gap up on good news, um, it, it is definitely a good prospect for tomorrow. OPGN, um, low floaters have been going crazy. And this is a low floater and it kind of broke out of a tight range today. So decent support below. 
We'll see if this one can't continue tomorrow. Um, again, remember what I just said. This actually did this that morning and ended up round tripping completely, but ended up finding really nice support and it's starting to inch higher. So maybe tomorrow it gets busy. Um, and you can see back here it had a huge move, 163 to 465 in one session. So um, this one's definitely worth watching for. Maybe a red to green entry, something like that tomorrow. ACST got shot down here and shot down here, but not before making big intraday moves, okay? And then uh, ended up closing well off its highs today, but it's another low floater, and I think that's where in coming out of decent support. I think that's worth watching for a follow-through day tomorrow. GEVO um, had this day back here, which was only, what, four sessions ago. It was on the watch list for today, and I'll show you how I called it in chat today, but um, real quick, on this day, it went from 320 to 535. That's a huge move down lower for two days and then i call just a, a narrow opening range breakout today and let me show you that real quick anyway in short before i forget this is back on watch for tomorrow as a matter of fact it's moving up a little bit in after hours it's trading right around four bucks um and i think they had news very close to the end of the day somebody reported a stake so with the recent action in this one it is definitely interesting to me um for tomorrow uh i called it today and i just showed you the setup right you had the huge move i can pan out and show it to you there was that huge intraday move, and then you had two days lower. These are five-minute candles. And so then today, it opens, and it's in a very narrow range for 15 minutes. When it started to inch up past 375 on the next candle, um, I called it long, just uh, anywhere around the high of day. I think I said 377, 378. Worst case stop was like six cents below, and look what happens. Ended up moving up so fast, it got halted, and then went almost to 475 before... Sort of round tripping, but a decent little close on that late day news. So this one might have a follow through day um, tomorrow. I, I definitely think it's worth watching. That's G-E-V-O. E-N-D-P, kind of ugliness here. You can picture, you can sort of picture a big head and shoulders here. However, um, it's come down for like, I don't know, four days in a row to get down to these recent lows. Generally, just like you wouldn't want to buy something that's up three days in a row to finally get to a breakout area on the chart kind of have the same thing here you don't necessarily want to think short when it's been falling for three or four days so i think it's due for a bounce and it's at support here um, it's an ugly daily chart though right but i think it probably catches a bounce tomorrow these are my least favorite i'm, I'm more of a strong recent momentum you know uh, jump on board recent momentum at, at inflection points trader but if you like the bounce plays this is a decent prospect for it um, C-U-R, let me pan out a little bit, had the huge two-day move there and then gave a lot of it back today on, on lower volume. This was sort of the breakout area and it came down to, to kind of retest the breakout area where it broke through recent highs. So maybe it bounced back up tomorrow. Not in love with it, but that doesn't matter. Um, I only need one decent trade at any given day and I've got my daily goal. So this is sort of like the all researching all these and putting all these on charts is really my method to hopefully get one good setup and one good trade tomorrow. You know, two is better and three is better, but um, it's all worth the work as long as one of these pays off, right? Um, IDXG, this is, well, I don't know. It had this huge move back here, had another huge move here, and then it gapped up yesterday. And then, so now you've, I don't know. Today you've got, uh, it sold off a bit. You could argue, you could argue that, you know, back down here was recent support and it got close to that. Um, it's kind of sitting close to the 20 day. The only reason I watch stuff like this is because, again, I hover over this candle. It went from 491 to 1425 this day. So any stock that can move like that, you heard me just talk about a little bit ago, right? Stocks that can make massive moves and they've done so recently should be on a chart if you're a day trader. So what's my entry tomorrow? I don't know. I have to wait and see a trade. I might not enter at all. I might not give a setup. Um, but if you look at the last two days after the gap up, you've got a high which happened in the opening 15 minutes yesterday and another high in the opening 15 minutes today. Um, so we'll see. I, I mean, I like afternoon breakouts on these things, but it might give a different setup too. Certainly worth watching. IDXG, IMUC had a big breakout yesterday and then today, a quiet inside day. Sometimes you get a third day play right back up. So that one goes on watch. OREX goes on bounce watch, had a huge move back here down about four days in a row. A little bit of a bottoming tail today. That one goes on watch. H-M-N-Y. Um, you know, speaking of low floaters, this one has cut loose a few times. Um, you can see back here from like a dollar to almost 17 or 17 bucks in two sessions, then a lower high, then a lower high. And it's really kind of gone into almost nothing 
But when you zoom in a little bit, then you have this interesting bounce from three to over four, came back down. So you're in a kind of a tighter range and has great support at three. A little bit of extra volume today. So I do like this over today's high, which would be 391. I'm going to put that in my notes. 391 breaks today's high and you look to the left and you have a high from about a week ago that was 414. So I, I would put it in my notes 415 is the secondary catalyst. 391, hopefully can get it through that whole number inflection point four and then through the recent high of 414 uh, and this one might just get some upside uh, momentum. It can move at times. And then lastly, CHNR, sorry for being long-winded today. Huge pop back here. 173 to 573, right? Then a lower high, then a lower high, and a really nice coiled flag. I've been watching this one. I mentioned it in my video a couple nights ago, and then it popped today um, when all Chinese low floaters were popping, and I missed it. Um, but it is interesting over, like, say, over today's high. I went to 314, so you could put 315 in your notes, or possibly a better setup on an intraday basis um, with a catalyst above. So we'll have to see how it trades. All right, anyway, sorry for babbling so long. Have a great night. We'll talk to you tomorrow.